Hey folks, your OS reviews. It's 2017 now and VR is finally starting to pick up. However, there needs to be an accessible way for consumers to also capture and record content that works with AR and VR helmets and products. So LifeEI has presented a fairly accessible product that's under $200 and works as an accessory that you can snap using micro USB onto any Android phone or Windows phone. Essentially, it's a 360 camera that has lenses both on the front as well as on the back, which makes it easy to capture VR-ready content. You can then share this with you YouTube as well as check it out using maybe your Oculus Rift or any other VR helmet uh, and share your life as well as interact and produce content which is makes this whole ecosystem a lot more compelling and interesting. So this is what the packaging is like. You can find this directly through the company's website or also on Amazon. It comes in a few different colors. You can scan this code to learn a bit more of information about the company. As part of the investment, you get a hard shell carrying case, which contains a life EI and a few accessories. You also have a quick a warranty card in addition to a quick start guide that is printed in full color. It tells you how to download the application and to attach this onto your phone and selecting a specific mode for capturing 360 video as well as editing it directly using the LifeEI application. So there's also the ability for this to support a USB Type-C product and comes with an adapter which you can use to pop into maybe a newer type of Android phone that has Type-C and also includes this pretty interesting U2C cable which extends the LifeEI onto a angle and uh, above the surface of a table almost like a webcam of sorts which makes it better maybe for recording longer videos and you don't want to use a tripod. There's also the accelerometer functions that works by default using your phone's hardware. So inside here there's access to the Life EI itself. We'll take a closer look at the design in a second. Finally you have access to some of the aforementioned accessories inclusive of this uh, U2C adapter which inserts into micro USB on one side and then USB Type-C on the other side and it stays in place since it is a pretty stiff cable. There's also just a traditional micro USB to USB Type-C uh, adapter included as well. If you don't want to use this longer arm, you can still make that work. Finally, there is an extra little carrying pouch if you want to protect the Wi-Fi eye even more to prevent the lens from scratching and that's everything you get in the packaging. So taking a quick look at the design of the Life EI first, you can see that it's made out of plastic, but the construction here is pretty decent, I'd the say. The surface of the plastic does attract a little bit of fingerprints and smudges after you start using it. It's quite shiny, but overall, hard wheel feel, feels uh, substantial and solid enough. And again, there's two lenses to capture that 360 uh, effect, essentially 180 degrees wide angle on each side, and then it snaps the two pieces together as part of the software operation. Here we have a protector for the micro USB tip, which is pretty standard stuff, and you just insert this onto your phone and you're ready to go after downloading the application. So let's take a quick look at the app and its performance next. So here we are, this is just the Lifey View application. You just search for Lifey Eye or Lifey View and that should be the first one that pops up. Under settings, there are a few things that you can do in terms of capturing video. For instance, you can change it so that there is a logo or watermark that appears on your videos, uh, but you can't really seem to change the watermark mark into your own so it's not too much customization but you can add that if you want to and then also there are Facebook options for sharing this as a feed to your friends and family there's a viewfinder if you want to have it in 360 and use the accelerometer on your phone or the gyro sensor to act as the tilt uh, kind of in a pseudo VR or cardboard like fashion to see your your video content and there's also YouTube live which you can sign in and that allows you to automatically upload live 360 video onto YouTube which is pretty cool the resolution here goes up to 1080p of course up to 30 frames per second and it uses a microphone on your phone for capturing audio so that's something to quickly keep in mind um, otherwise it does remain fairly cool during operation doesn't really heat up that much which is nice to note other things in settings here, you can also directly buy another Life EI. So if you didn't have one, you can tap on this. It's going to redirect you to a link. And there's also a bit of software information about the version or the model. And over here, we have a Life e gallery. This will display all of your captured videos and images using 360 that you can pan through, share with family and friends. The center key here, tapping on this one, directly launches into the camera application.
but so afterwards it will open up the camera's viewfinder and then you can see your surroundings. Again, it is extremely stretched because it is a 360 camera. So especially if you're not viewing this using VR or 360 compatible content, um, it does have this tendency to create this fish eyes effect. But if you are in a VR and you try to rotate you know, your head around, it does create a very natural like experience. So one of the first things I've noticed when looking at this camera was that the quality is not outstanding. It's pretty good, but it's not amazing. So for a full HD camcorder, there is quite a bit of grain uh, and static, and that's not only because of lighting conditions if you're indoors. Even if you go outdoors and you're broad sunlight, it doesn't capture quite as much detail as a traditional camera just because it has to record 360 degrees, and the lens of the camera, the nature of this lens distorts along the edges a little bit just to capture a wider field of view. It's a bit of a trade-off. But what's really cool about this uh, viewfinding that you see here is you can zoom all the way in, so that uh, gives you a bit more detail and specific subjects and if you use this like a security camera and look at things such as the top so I can see all the way to the top of the room that I'm in right now in addition to the side so it really captures quite an immersive view you can see that where I'm holding a tablet it disappears a little bit but it is a true 360 degree viewfinder which is actually pretty interesting um, you know if you had never used a 360 camera or a vr ready camera before it does take a bit of adjustment to get used to when you're ready you can just take a, sh a snapshot very quickly just tap on that it takes a few seconds to process but uh, afterwards it's going to save your your image same thing with video it just toggles into this camcorder like view starts recording video content pretty quickly and uh, it works pretty well 30 frames per second so um, not the most stable thing in the world if you are continuously vlogging or walking around, but it does work and you can pan zoom afterwards you've recorded the video to specific scenes in your shot. So let's take a quick look at some dem demo images and shots I've taken with this camera to give you a better impression. So for example, I've recorded a brief video clip and inside the Life View app, I can also edit these video clips directly just by uh, changing you know the duration back and forth scrubbing I can tap on share that goes into Facebook live YouTube 360 again or share using Gmail what's interesting about this share function is it doesn't actually link uh, it doesn't actually download the entire video or image it links to an image that you've taken so if you try to send this by email the recipient will open up a link and they will find out that they actually need to download the Lifey app that you see here, which is a free app to view the image that you've taken in 360. So it's not the most convenient thing, but it's a pretty smart way for the company to gain traction on the application and hopefully for more people to pick up and buy their product. But if you don't want to use this, you want, you want to figure out a workaround, what you have to do is actually exit the application, go into your gallery, it's actually going to be there, all your images and videos taken with the camera, and then from your gallery, send it as you would traditionally additionally by as an attachment or uploading it to the cloud to your computer and then your full images and videos will be seen without having to go through a link process so that's something of a tip that i found out after using the app for a bit so let's tap on this play key um, you can see i can scrub around which is really interesting even as the video is moving and still zoom in you know some of the loss of quality you can kind of tell from this video here but it overall decent as far as color accuracy and saturation not really that bad but you know for a full hd camcorder definitely you can see some uh, deterioration which is expected it's the norm of this type of product especially in this phase of development but you can see that you can definitely see everything around you from the top to the bottom which is just quite an interesting experience especially if you have Google Cardboard, you have HTC Vive, or something that you can pop it into this view where the accelerometer is now used for rotation. I can then exit out of this if I want to just by tapping on there. And I can also look at the entire shot in one continuous, more of a stretch frame by tapping on this icon on the top right hand corner. It also gives you an indicator of what fraction of the 360 camera you're looking at as this visual indicator. So if you move around the shot, it's also going to move this symbol so that you know where you are at all times if you're not in a VR environment or just looking at a flat 2D screen. So the UI itself is really well thought out. It works quite well. Uh, the speed of the program is pretty swift. I didn't encounter that many crashes. Uh, initially initializing the camera whenever you open the app does take a few seconds but afterwards as long as you're in the app itself it's uh, very quick to load up um, as far as power consumption really not that bad either it's an OTG so it does draw power directly from the tablet uh, or your phone but um, average I would say just like 
you know, you know some power banks in addition to maybe Bluetooth speakers. It doesn't draw draw power at a huge rate. Um, the tablet or your phone does get a little bit warm after a while, especially if you're doing editing, which is expected. But the camera itself still remains fairly cool in temperature, which is good. So let me take a quick look at some other shots I try to capture in broad daylight to give you an example of what the experience is like. Um, again, they're not the most impressive you know, things in the world, even in broad daylight. That's what I wanted to point out. So this was captured in very sunny environments. So the lighting conditions are nearly ideal, but you can still see the detail is not super impressive if you zoom all the way in. But you know, mo mostly your shots are going to be recognized. There's some stitching things that are going on that might seem a little bit odd, but as you transition into actual VR, it becomes a lot more natural as you move around and you realize that uh, it works a lot better because what you're trying to see here is a 3D representation of a photo stitched into a 2D view, which is why some parts um, look a little off. But again, when you're actually in the VR world, it actually works, works very well. So it's quite easy to use and set up. Just plug and play. It took me less than two minutes to start using this and start recording video and also image content. So it uh, gets great marks as far as the uh, usability and uh, ease of use is concerned. The only concerns that I would have is uh, you know, the, the quality isn't as good as some more expensive options on the market, which is, I guess, to be expected, and it does require OTG. So make sure your phone supports that. Otherwise, uh, you know, you'll be out of luck or have to use a firmware to flash your phone. All in all, the Life UV really is a compelling 360 camera just because it's a snap-on attachment that's very small and makes 360 video content accessible to anyone. The price point for this type of gear is still a little pricey at the moment, but as VR becomes a reality moving forwards, I think it's equally important to have access to hardware that allows you to create VR-ready content as it is to actually get the helmet or the cardboard snap-on. So this really enables you to do that without having to purchase an all-new device that has VR-ready out of the gate, maybe like Tango has for Android, um, or you know a more expensive VR 360 camcorder, whereas this one works right out of the box, it's affordable, and snatches onto most of your devices without any problems. So all in all, the interface is nicely thought out. Yes, the resolution could be better. I'm not sure if that's a hardware limitation or a software version uh, limitation at the moment, but uh, hopefully that's an area that can be ironed out not only by Lifey uh, I, but by this type of category of, of camcorders. If you've noticed on YouTube, a lot of 360 video uh, does not seem quite as impressive in resolution. You'll notice that this is a general trend. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been our quick video review of the Lifey Eye Easy Snap-on 360-degree VR-ready camera. Thanks for watching.